I knew that the 25th of February this year was going to be the day that I was out of work because that was the day Dad was retiring. That was the day we were selling the trucks and I didn't know what I was going to do. Talked to a few people. A couple of people actually suggest I go mow lawns because I love my own lawn. I listen to every podcast that you've done. Poor man. <laughs> every one. And I couldn't find a negative. I couldn't. Yeah. And I rang a few different franchisees and I'm like, I don't want to hear the positives about gyms. I want to hear the negative. And I think there's half a dozen I rang in different areas around and no one could give me a negative. So today joining me on the Gyms Bowling and Gyms Group podcast is Mark Beggs. And I remember me at training, Mark. So it's been good to catch up with you and, and to see how you've been going as well. Because um, you came down to training. How long ago was it? Hasn't even been a year, has it? No, no, it's only four months. So I mean, four months. Yeah, yeah. It was April, end of February. Yes. April. Yes. I started. Yeah. So how's it been all going for you? Uh, it's insane. It was the best decision of my life. Trying to go to gyms. It's just it's changed everything. It's just yeah. I can't talk highly enough of it. And what were you doing prior to, to the gyms buying franchise? A bit of everything, but mostly I was an interstate truck driver for the majority of the last twenty years. It's a very tough job. So I remember we oh. spoke about this at National. It's just, yeah. just the health and, you know, it's just not an easy job at all. No. Well, it's great. I've lost 10 kilos so far. Yep. Yeah, that's great. Well, you're a fairly big fella. So how's the health been going? Because um, obviously you're a taller fella as well. So you're using all the equipment and things can be quite new. So <laughs> Yeah. So when I'm, I'm just a little bit under seven foot. So six foot 11. I started my starting weight when I was down at training was 145. Yeah, I'm down to 140. 32 now so that's great um i just made adjustments with all the gear to just to make it easier for myself like got the whipper gripper handle for the snipper it's a lot it's a game changer that is uh i've got a bush ranger self-propelled it's fully adjustable so i can adjust it right up so i don't have to hunch yeah. over it all yeah everything's good and how was the um first couple of weeks then going from being in the trucks to doing what you're doing there's no polite way to say it really i was sore every day <laughs> like i was just just everything hurt. There's muscles that I found that I didn't know I owned, and yeah, yeah, it was just it was hard work. But yeah, I, I'm I'm good now. Like yeah, I, I'm punching out ten, twelve hour days every day, and yeah, I'm coming home feeling good. What's the training for you for the first couple of weeks? Obviously, you do the training in Melbourne. It's very energetic, and you, you get really excited. And you go back, and then you're ready to go. So, how did it, the training hold you in good stead? It was just perfect. Like it, I had half an idea. of business because i've worked for the old man running the truck business the last couple of years so i had a little bit of an idea on how to run a business but without that training i think i'd be look with if i did it independently without the training there's no way i'd still be in business yeah it, it taught me so much like just just small things but yeah it was great do you want to talk about a couple of things i use i actually use your example in training about the pay-for-work guarantee when you did the post in the local group i actually put that on our training now which oh, really? would be would be nice for you to know because i think it's yeah exactly because it's, i do actually because it's a great example so in training i actually have your picture where you first started where you had the shorts on and you had the hat and you had all your gear there but you put a, a mildura community group and you said you know free community modes for those who need to promote the brand and all that sort of stuff yeah and that post went off like i see all the comments there and like all the goodwill and I actually use it as an example. That's what we want franchisees to do. It's such a fantastic thing. And can I just talk a bit about that and how you built your business in the early days using that? Well, to be honest, I didn't do that for the pay for work guarantee. I did that more to give back to the community. It was a game changer for me. Like I did it. I wanted to help people out. I did probably half a dozen free modes. I didn't claim the pay for work guarantee, but there was two... So you see the comments, like there's two or three hundred comments. But, yeah, uh, we're nuts. <laughs> I saw yeah, it in training. It's a great example of it. it yeah. It's not even close to the inbox messages that I got. Well, how many, how many, how many messages did you, did you get from it? Because Jim will be interested in this as well. I couldn't count, to be honest. Like It was it was well over 300. Jeez. And was that just like congratulations or people asking for work or trying to uh, do the – like what was what were they – I would say half of people – yeah, about half, half like half people – asking for freebies and then half the people just saying, you're a good bloke, thanks for doing this. You know? Yeah. And it was hard to sift through all those and pick the right people to help out. <laughs> I <can imagine>. like, <laughs> but I just wanted to help people, like people who are really struggling, really in need. The biggest one I chose, you'd probably look on my Facebook and see the videos. That was the big jungle in the backyard one you did, yeah? Yeah. It was yeah. crazy. It was 
a struggling couple. They're only young. They're in uh, early 30s. They've got seven kids. Not all theirs. They've got a couple of fosters in there. They're just struggling. And it's just, they're just doing it tough. And they're on the verge of getting kicked out of their rooms all because the garden was a mess. It, like, I went out on a Saturday. The missus come and help for a little bit. We were there for eight hours and yes. really transformed their space. Like, the kids couldn't use the backyard at all. They couldn't use the front yard. It was just an absolute disgrace. But no fault of their own. They just got a lot going on. To leave there and see the smile on the kids' faces and the gratitude from the parents, it was just, it was humbling that I was in a position to help someone and change their life. I, it sounds a lot, but I, I really believe that it did because it gave the kids some a new area to play. But out of that, I gained 12 regulars. Wow. And the, I'm, I'm still getting messages from people because I post oh, not so much weekly, but if not weekly, fortnightly. It's just jobs that I do that you know look good when I'm finished and, yep. you know, put advice, lawn care advice on the community page, more for the brand than me personally, but it always comes back. It helps to the brand. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, just just a bit of, you know, lawn care advice, like it's time to fertilise, you know, yep. time to start thinking about a lawn renovation with the thatching, scarifying, a bit of coring. Yeah, it's time to prune your roses back when, you know, a month ago. Yeah, that sort of stuff. And I, I get a lot of regulars out of that or, yeah, I've had a few big once-off jobs. And, yep. yeah, the community page really helps. Like, I'd say it's 50-50 with Jim's leads and the community page leads. That's, yeah. just, that's, that's massive, and I'm, I'm glad to hear that because we obviously, um, you know, Jim's a big on the local heroes type community initiatives that we do as well. And to see and to hear how you, as, you have put that into practice and it's helped your business perfectly, like that's what we you know want people to do. Is It's really great for us to hear. And cause I, the smart thing that you did, which I saw, because I, I joined that group just to see, um, you took you did the video walkthroughs as well, and then you posted it back up in the group saying this was for you know the couple who needed it, etc. Going through the job and just it just kept the whole the whole momentum going when you did that, and you did it a couple of times with some other jobs, and I thought that was really clever as well because it's a genuine video, it's a genuine photo, and you're proving to people that you know I did this offer, and I'm actually doing it as well, I'm not just doing oh, it, and putting it up there for no reason. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like there's there's nothing worse than having people. That, yeah, and there's so many charities out there that you find sort of end up being a scam and just yeah, yeah. to um yeah you know, virtual si- virtue signaling. Yeah. There's like, yeah, I'm all over this but I'm not gonna do anything about it. But to me, like I want to give back and I do give back and I want people to understand that that's I am an animal word and I'll give it. Now use that example in training because it's such a good thing that you did. I know you didn't do it to get out all the extra work and stuff like that originally but um all the pay for work guarantee, but such a great um local Facebook groups are really you know, great source of referral and, and um, getting the name out there now in the modern your modern day marketing for 2024. It's a really smart thing what you did. And the more you post, so I found out recently when people search mowing, my yeah. mine comes up first mm-hmm. because like in the community page, if yep. people search like mowing in the community page, my page comes up because I post the most yep. regular. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. That. And yeah, the way the way Facebook going as well, they're trying to get way more local uh, with businesses, and, and people are going there now for local, you know, as opposed to Google sometimes. So um, it's a really oh, thing to use. And, and what you did was fantastic. It was just a genuine post, and it was a genuine video, and then you followed it up, and it was it was just magic what you did. And I was going to say as well, I want to ask about because you've got you've already done really good numbers in your business so early on, and the couple of questions I got for you is about um, upselling. So it's obviously not just mowing in Mildura; it's a bit drier than than other places. So how have you gone about? Dealing with clients and then and then upselling your services into other things. I don't like people giving me the hard sell. Uh, so what I do is I I suggest it's more of a suggestion than like than anything else. It's like your lawn, for instance. Yeah, you know, I noticed it, it's looking a bit rough, and then yeah, you know, it could do with a fertilizer. And yeah, you know, I can offer you that service if you don't want to do it yourself or. Yeah, it's coming up to spring. I've noticed there's a fair bit of thatch in this. I do offer a yeah, a full renovation service. Up to you. It's not not compulsory. It's not part of me. It's just like I'm offering if you really love your lawn or yeah, I just scored a client, they know nothing about grass or gardens. They just want a nice garden and nice grass. So yeah, I did a once off cleanup and that's now turned into like it's a commercial property, don't get me wrong here. It's turned into a really, 
really profitable fortnightly service. So on the first invoice, I just put suggestions for the future would be prune the roses, prune the uh-huh. trees. And then they called me back and said, oh, can you do this as a fortnightly thing and just walk after it? Let, we don't want to have to worry about it. You just come and do it. It works both with commercial and clients. It's just like you just suggest. It don't, you don't have to sell it. And then, you know, nine times out of 10, they'll call you back and say, right, I, can you come and do this? Smart thing. So you're not only not only suggested in, in person with like, you know, I noticed this, but you on the invoice as well, you put suggested other services beyond what you're quoting for. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. And I was going to say as well, then um, you've obviously got a lot of goodwill already, but, you know, um, referrals. So are, are you asking for referrals or are you just getting referrals and actually from doing a good job or how just are you doing? Really, I, yep. I don't feel, I'm, I'm not overly confident in myself, so I don't ask people to refer me. It's, well, yeah, I'll just, as a side note, I, here's my business card, tell your friends and family. And, yeah, that's what Jim said in training, so that's what I was trying to get. That's good. So how many business yeah. cards do you hand them? In, do you hand them a couple or is it oh, just one? Generally four or five, and that's fine. Right. Oh, perfect. I've noticed the fridge magnets work yep. a whole lot better than business cards. Okay. At, in my first few weeks, I'd say, oh, I've got a business card or I've got a fridge magnet, which would you prefer? And after that, I honestly don't think I've given out an actual business card. It's all been magnets. All magnets. All right, there we go. Because it's yeah, you know, it's just a natural thing. You give them a magnet, they chuck it on their fridge. Yes, and it's actually like useful. Subconscious- <laughs> yeah, it's all, like they're looking at it every day. Yeah, and then yeah, you're the the first person they think of. Absolutely. Yeah. So there you go. Take big rear fridge magnets and hand them out. Yeah, absolutely. Perfect. And I was going to say as well. Yeah. Type of type of jobs you're doing. So I, mean, I know we've spoken on the phone before, and you've you've told me. Some pretty amazing things I didn't know some of our franchisees could do. So maybe do you want to talk about a couple of bigger jobs and beyond mowing, obviously, you've been doing in your business. So do you want to talk about some of the bigger jobs that you've been doing? But to be honest, I have only started my mower three or four times in the last three weeks. Wow. I've, yeah, a lot of cleanups, a lot of pruning. Like um, I did just around the corner from home here. It was a gym's lead. Uh, was, so it started as a weeding job. It was just the way this bloke's driveway. It's a, it's a new estate, so he's got his main driveway and he's built a, sort of a second one and he hadn't done anything with it and it was just a weeding job. So I just got yarning with him and just said to him, well, what's your plans? Because the backyard, it half turfed it and the back half was just dirt and weeds. And yeah, just got yarning. And he said, oh, this is, this is my plan. I want an entertaining area there. I want a shed there. I want a garden bed there. The driveway, eventually I want it put some pebbles and just make it look nice. And I was like, I can do that. And he's like, really? And I was like, yeah, why not? And <laughs> yeah, so I come home and I was sort of thought about it. I was like, can I do that? <laughs> oh, why not? So yeah, went through the process. Like I did all the measurements and everything, quieted it all up and thought, that doesn't sound right. It's not, not dear enough. And I was like, what if something goes wrong? So I added another 1,500 bucks on it just, just in case. Yeah, I was like, there's no way he's going to accept this. Like a bloke that said, oh, I think I can do it. Yeah, within 15 minutes, he called me back and he goes, yeah, no worries, mate, you know, I'll do it whenever you can fit me in in the next couple of months. And yeah, so I did that. And yeah, that turned out an absolute treat. And yeah, so that was great. And then the local mower bloke, the mower shop bloke, he put me onto a, a lady that she wanted a garden bed. And that's all he said. You know, she just wants a little garden bed put in the backyard and went around there yeah. and this thing turned out to be 60 metres long, two metres wide, yeah. out of a bare backyard. <laughs> and I looked at her like, yeah, I can do that. Yeah, why not? <laughs> like, it's only on a bigger scale than the little ones I made here at home. So <laughs> just how hard can it be? I quoted and, again, added a just-in-case. She accepted it and, yeah, I thought I'd be able to smash it out on a weekend with a bit of help. And that ended up as a four-day job instead of a two-day job, but... And I still made money. 60 metres. Bloody hell. 60 metres, yeah. yeah. It was insane. And then, yeah, after after we finished, she was stoked with the job and it was really good. And I said, what are you doing with it? And she goes, oh, I'm just going to put a roll of pencil pines in. And I was like, why do we need to make this two metres wide? And she goes, oh, I just thought it was a good number. As you do. Yeah, so it was, yeah, that was, that both those jobs were in one week. On top yeah. of a regular mows, and that was um, up till six weeks ago. I did that. 
Are you surprised about the types of jobs you're doing? Because I know in gym, gym training, Jim has mentioned about um, extras and all that sort of stuff as well. But they're pretty, they're pretty like not, when people when you hear about that sort of job, you don't. Most people would not traditionally think Jim's mum, but as we know, we can you know you can do a lot of things. So you're surprised about the variety of jobs you've been doing. Oh, uh, when I start talking to people, I tell them Jim's not just mowing. Oh, good. But, yeah, so I've I've done everything from hanging curtain rails to door handles and change the door lock and fix the sprinkler head and it was just yeah when i tell people i'm jim's not just mowing i'll do a bit of tell me what you need done i'll see if i can do it like i'm pretty handy sort of yeah. jack of all trades sort of thing and not qualified at anything so i just like yeah i'll give it a crack and if it's a little bit out of my scope i'll youtube or tiktok or cool. work out Hey, nothing wrong with that because that's the modern day of doing it. We have a lot of franchisees who will say similar things. They might get a job like it might be irrigation or something for the first time, and they've got this. They, they'll they'll accept it, and they might not know exactly how to do it. And they'll it's nothing wrong with it. I think they're watching. That's the modern day. You've got to learn somehow, right? And then obviously, well, we've, and we've got the support system in place if something happens or goes wrong for the customer as well. So it's it's you learn a new skill. Customer gets a good job done, and then if there's something does happen, you know, gyms will come in and back it up if needed. Yeah, like probably the most random one was I re grouted a tire, um, re grouted a shower. You re what? Re re grouted a shower. Re grouted a shower. Wow. There yeah, you go. So I rip, ripped all the old grout out and put new grout in, and yeah, yeah, some I've never even come close to thinking about before. But yeah, between YouTube and TikTok, I learned how to do it. And job came up a tree, customer was stoked, and yeah, I mean, well, she's pe- giving me yeah. referrals and actual garden work now so well look it's not, it's not unusual that i hear like the mowing jim's mowing franchise it would be like the central point and you know, they might need a skip bin or an arborist and stuff and the jim's mowing guy all of a sudden's organizing an arborist a skip bin painters handyman it's not a yeah. it's not an unusual thing when they got one person that gives them good service and they trust to be sort of the the one go-to person with a whole bunch of different trades almost like a project manager well, i've heard it happen not only for yourself but multiple times with a lot of franchisees around the country who do that yeah, it's great because, like, up here we're pretty isolated from yep. anywhere. There's, I think, we've counted 15 actual franchisees up here through, I think there's, there's five of us mowers and then there's... Carver cleaning guy there, yep. Yep, and uh, there's a couple of laundries and a couple yep. of cleaners. Dog wash and test and tag. I think there's just mm-hmm. a new test and tag as well up here. And I'll always refer them. And me and Craig, the carpet cleaner, I do a lot of clean up jobs as you've seen with my videos we we've worked together with so i'll take on the whole job like yep. in the lease clean and he'll come in and do the inside when i'll do the outside mm. yeah it's, that's great that's, yeah that's, well, that's what it, that's it, what it's about yeah it's great I'll, yeah sort of worked with a few of the other mower guys on bigger jobs and yeah i sort of had a bit of a doozy yesterday and i stuffed up with a quote i i lost money yeah, thought I was being cheeky and quoted a huge price and then just turned out to be an absolute monstrous job. That, hmm. And then, yeah, just got on the phone and a couple of blokes come and help me out because, like, yeah, got busted here. And, yeah, they come out no dramas yesterday when it was raining and helped us get through it and a bit of advice and stuff. So that was that was amazing. Well, how do you go about quoting? What's your, do you have a method for it or how are you doing it? I have my base hourly rate in my head. Yep. And then I'll sort of work out how long I think the job will take. Yeah, it times it out. And yeah, I've got a standard mo rate, whether it's half an hour or an hour. That's yeah, basically. But I'll always look after pensioners. I'm a bit odd. I just I don't care. Like I've got a lady and she's she's an old lady and she's a pensioner and she hasn't got a great deal of money, but she loves the lawn. What I'd normally charge, say, ninety bucks for, I charge her fifty. But is what it is. Like she loves it, and she looks after a lot on the time that I'm not there, and I just come in and keep it all neat and tidy for her, and she's stoked. And yeah, like I clean the gutters out for nothing, just because she couldn't afford it, and there was grass growing out of the gutters, so I just jumped up there and ripped it all yeah. out for her. Yeah, it was an extra hour, but it was a quiet, quiet day. So yeah, why not help her out? That's good to hear that. I was going to yeah. say as well, how's the support been from your franchise or Matt? So has Matt been up there and how's he been with you? No, Matt actually hasn't been up here because, like, obviously we're a long way from here. Yeah. He's 70 hours away. So, uh, um, yeah, he's on the phone weekly. First month or so, it was, it was every day, if not every second day, and just making sure I was doing it right. And, like, I've had a couple of moments where I've 
nearly chucked in the towel. Like I had a really quiet week and I'm just like, nah, this is, I'm done. I can't keep doing this. And yeah. it was literally, now I look back on it, it was 10 days of quiet. And now I'm booked three weeks in solid. Like I haven't not got a slot for three weeks. And I look back at that and just go, you're a goose. I'm yeah. sure Matt was telling you that as well, because Matt, Matt knows, obviously, he speaks a lot of franchisees and knows oh. the seasonal sort of nature of it, so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was just, I, I know I expect too much of myself. I think my missus tells me that all the time, that it, it was not perfect. I'm not happy. Yeah, so. But, yeah, just Matt's been an absolute wealth of information, especially on the business side of it. Matt's a great bloke, but he's not a one mower, and he's the first to admit that. So, <laughs> I've, I've reached out to John Wilds and Dan Cahill and Jason from down at Ballarat. He's not a franchise all, but he's um, one of the senior blokes down in Ballarat. Yeah, uh, that's good. Like Mitch up in Dubbo because Mitch and Dan were the two blokes from your podcast that can oh, okay. to bite the bullet and actually have a crack at it. So Cool. Yeah. I mean, they're both good guys. And Matt, yeah, Matt's not, Matt's not them, and you know, using a whip to slip or anything like that, but he's got a great bunch of business knowledge. And the beauty of Matt is he speaks to every franchisee in his yeah. region, like on a regular basis. So if there problems you come across, he would have spoken to someone who's probably got someone similar thing, something similar or knows who to refer you to as well. So that's where yeah. the great thing is. Well. Yeah, he's got some great business knowledge. But yes, I wouldn't be going to Matt for pruning advice or no. <laughs> technical advice on how to fix the mower yet. But um, and he's a Carlton fan as well, so we won't hold that against him. Yeah, well, we won't talk about that. <laughs> That's good to hear that. But I was going to say, I'm glad to hear that you um, you know, you know, spoke to Mitch and, and Dan as well, who are people who have been on the podcast before and other, and other people. I think it's really important and the beauty of the gym system as well. So maybe what's what's their best advice to you been? Like, what have you asked them for? Is this Did you contact them during those, maybe those weeks where you felt like chucking it in or? Well, no, I about? sort of just buried my head in those weeks and I was, yeah. yeah. But um, it was just, oh, Dan, I did. Like, I needed some advice on training a hedge and, just some basic advice, and yeah, he was great. And I spoke to Mitch a couple of weeks ago because I'm I want to expand, and I knew he was running a cracking business up there in Dubbo. So, and he gave me some mad advice, like it's just some really really good little tips that will change my whole structure and the way I do things. Dubbo and Mildura are very similar in climate, so. Yeah, okay, we're 10 hours apart, but the climate's much the same. That's why I sort of reached out to him, just someone out of the area, someone totally neutral, and, yeah, he was great. I love hearing that. It's great to have you here that you've got a support network with um, other franchisees and even other franchisors, but I think it's really great to, great to hear that. And I was going to say as well, with your um, – financially, I have to say how much money you've been making, but financially, how has the decision been for you? Uh, look, driving in the state is – insane money like it's great money coming to this i'm not making as much like i'm only four months in i started in autumn it's now weeds up I, I wasn't expecting to be making a million bucks this year but i wanted a, a buffer in the bank before i actually started paying myself which i've got that buffer now and yeah just started paying myself which is good yeah uh yeah but we're coming into springtime i've just put on a casual she's young girl and she's cracking so yeah i've got my finger in a few pies and contracts are going to come in in the next month six weeks and yeah awesome big gear to go with that and financially by this time next year it'll be a whole different conversation i'll be kicking back and loving life well the main thing for me maybe then ask you is maybe mentally like how's it been for you because i remember being you at training here and you you obviously you look a lot more refreshed now and then maybe before when i met you in training like you look a lot like for me, like I can't see you physically there in terms of weight and stuff, but I can tell from your, your face that you've lost a bit of weight and yeah. you look way more refreshed than maybe than what you were down here. Well, mate, being away from home when I was driving in to say it was, it was like I've been married to my beautiful wife for two and a half years now. And we, up until February 25 this year, we'd spent, no, apart from our honeymoon, we'd spent no more than three days together at any given point. And now I get to come home to her every night and we sit down and we have dinner together. She is an absolute rock of support for me. She pushes me hard. She supports every decision I make, even the dumb ones. Well, I want to do that. No, I-, <laughs> I got a 15-minute bogey billiard edge yesterday. And 
for most blokes listening will know understand how I've scratched up I am at the moment. But I was an emotional wreck last night because I thought I'd bitten off more than I could chew and I just made a mess of a job and yeah, she just supported me and I went back fresh today and finished it off and the customer was stoked and told me he was going to give me another five star rating. So that was awesome. And without her, I reckon I would have thrown the towel in. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. It's emotionally, mentally, physically, this whole journey has just been amazing. That's good. And and how do you yeah. find the concept of fees? Because obviously franchise fees, you know, well, people have fee. to pay them every month, but how do you how do you feel about the whole fees and, and what you pay for them? I don't even think about it. It's a day's work. Yeah. Day's work a month. Well, that's that's why I look at it. I don't even think about it. That's good. Like I I've, I've talked to a couple of the independent blokes around here and they're struggling for work. Like, as I said before, I'm booked out solid for the next three weeks and like we haven't even hit spring yet. How do you find being part of the brand? Love it. Absolutely yeah. love it. I wear this everywhere. Like if I go to Bunnings on the weekend for myself, I wear it. And I'm, yeah, it's not every time, but I've scored work out of it. People just come up and it's like, yeah, have you got advice? Especially if you're in the gardening section or yeah, one of them aisles. They'll just come yeah. up and it's like, oh, mate, do you, do you know what to do here? And yeah, you know, sort of explain what I know. And they're like, oh, well, can you come and do it? I was like, um, yeah, why not? So, yeah, flick my business card and then they'll call me and, yeah. Perfect. Branding, it just it gives a lot of people peace of mind. Like, I've had to fight for a few quotes between me and a few independents and, like, through Jim's leads and that. And then, like, on my quotes, I always write fully issue and public liability for $20 because I outline just for one of my clients. Uh, yeah, fully police checked. Just just as a bottom note on the actual quote, and that's to me, I reckon that's won me a few extra jobs. No, for sure. That's no, amazing. And it's great to hear that. And great to hear the old Bunnings that Jim always mentions in training about sitting in your vehicle and Bunnings and walking around. But it's great to hear that it actually works and oh, it does, people coming sure. up for you for sure. Yeah. Cards, you know, a couple of, couple of iconic icons yeah, in their logos. You, know, you get the Jim's Bunnings logo and the Bunnings logo, and Dan Murphy's at the front, and then away, then away you, away you go. But um, I was going to say, so I said, you like it's a. It was a very scary time for you coming down here. I can imagine you would have quit your job, or you would have left your job, and you're gone. I don't know what to, I've watched all this content. You know, hopefully it's what we believe, and then you know you've come and done the training. But has it married up to what you thought it was going to be, or how's the experience overall looking back where you are now, to where you started? I knew that the 25th of February this year was going to be the day that I was out of work because that was the day Dad was retiring. That was the day we were selling the trucks and I didn't know what I was going to do. Talk to a few people, someone, a couple of people actually suggest I go in my lawns because I love my own lawn. I listen to every podcast that you've done. Oh man. <laughs> every, <laughs> um, and there, I couldn't find a negative. I couldn't. Yeah. And I rang a few f- different franchisees and I'm like, right, I, I don't want to hear the positives about gyms. I want to hear the negatives. Mm. And I think it was half a dozen I rang in different areas around and no one could give me a negative. And then, yeah, coming down to Melbourne, which is horrible because I just don't do cities well, and being thrust in a room with a hundred odd other people, not my cup of tea. And then, yeah, going through the training and like the three days of the business training and then three days of the mowing specific training. It was everything that the podcast said, everything that everyone I've spoken to had said. There was no no grey area. It was just great. And then, yeah, while I was down there, I had a yarn with Jim, and I've actually called Jim on the phone a few times and just had a yarn. Oh, okay. That's great. What have you what have you been, what have you spoke to Jim about? Because he's, he's a short man on the phone. He's got oh, a name. I don't can be short. Sure. <laughs> just, short. A, just a lot of, yeah. There was a few dramas when I first started. And, yeah. Um, yeah, I just rang him to, because I, like, I'm representing him. Even like, yes, this is my business, but at the end of the day, there's what is that four, five thousand franchise, five thousand five hundred technically now, yes. And yeah, it's his face, and everyone knows Jim. Yeah, uh, yeah. So I, I'm very conscious of that. So yeah, I just rang him and had a yarn with him about these dramas that I was having. Yeah, he was awesome. He just and- really delayed all fears I had on. Honestly, thought that I was. So do you find it? Do you, do you find it's amazing that um the CEO of the company will answer your call directly? Because I think you know 
it's crazy when I, we're, we're, we're used to it, right? So I'm used to it. I'm used to, I see the talk all the time. I'm used to that. And you hear from people like, you know, they work at companies where there's maybe 50 people or the smaller yeah. company and they've never seen the CEO or the CEO has middle managers you got to go to first before you go to the CEO. Whereas Jim, you know, part of this, you know, head of this big organization. And as you said, you've called him on the mobile and he answers. Yeah, that, that was insane. Like yeah. uh, in training, he wrote his number up on the board and he's like, anytime you want to, chat here or you want to talk to me call me and i'll will answer and i'm in my head i'm thinking yeah right not it's as true serious. yeah <laughs> and he answered on the first try I didn't have to leave a message didn't he just answered and yeah like you said he's short but obviously he's got a lot to do but he really really helped me get the head back in a good spot and yeah he was great That's- it's great to hear. I'll tell tell people a bit of an inside worthy with Jim. What, what happens is the only time he doesn't answer his phone, he even has it on is when we do videos. But if if I'm talking to him in a conversation, and let's say you called him, Mark, he will just stop mid sentence talking to me, pull up the phone on speaker, and talk with and answer it in, in front of the, answer the franchisees call over. If he's talking to staff or if he's in a meeting, the only time he turns his phone off and he sometimes he even forgets is when we do videos. So it's it's great to hear from your perspective that you called him and he, and he answered on the first try. That's awesome. Yeah, no, he's great. Yeah. I was gonna. I was gonna say as well. You, let's talk about the negatives then, because I love hearing you said you couldn't find any negatives. Well, what's what's? Let's talk about that because I think it's a good thing to mention. So negatives. What what are the negatives of the business been for you? Maybe is it something where you just didn't realize how sore you maybe be physically, or oh, has it been other things, or what's it been for you? The first month, yeah, the physical soreness, like from yeah. sitting on my butt working. <laughs> Like, okay, I, I work long hours. I start at 7 in the morning, knock it off at 11 at night. But I really wasn't doing much other than sitting there driving. Mm-hmm. So, and I, as you said, I've lost weight. You can see that. I dropped 10 kilos easy. But the soreness, that was that was insane. And I, I sort of half expected it. Yep. But the emotional, emotional toll in a way that, like, I put my heart and soul into this. Yeah, like if something small goes wrong, I beat myself up over it. But that's that's me. I want to be perfect. To everything I want to keep everyone happy. That is the only negative. I can't think of anything else. That's great to hear that. We'll get the opportunity for you. So if you want to, yeah. you want to slag it off negative, you can if you want. But that's that's no. great to hear. That's the thing. That's it. That's it. Absolutely that's, not. There's just, the, the support network is just second to none. I'm glad to hear you've been using it because a lot of the time I don't think people might be too too proud to call up someone. So I'm glad to hear you've actually used it and you've called up Jim and you've spoken to the other boys and and stuff like that. That's, that's and Matt as well. That's that's been really good to hear that you've done that because not a lot of people do. Or a lot of people do it, but not sometimes people don't do basic thing like that. Was reach out if they need support. Yeah, it's a blokey thing though. No, yeah, um, for, for sure. And it shouldn't be like if you need mm-hmm. help, ask for it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I was going to say, Mark, all right, thank you very much for your time today. Is there anything you want to leave us with? Like if someone's thinking about doing Jim's mowing or what would you say to them or what would you if maybe tell them to do? If someone's thinking about it, dead set, go back through all the Not Just Mowing podcasts, even some of the others, and listen, learn, and take it in and do it. Like this is the best decision you'll ever make. I'm 100% best decision. Oh, great to hear that. It's only four months in and you're already saying that. So um, you're know, looking forward yeah. to finding your progress and you might – you got, you got spring coming up as well, so um, good luck with spring. <laughs> Let's do this again in ten years, mate. When I get the sticker on for you, absolutely. No, hopefully, well, hopefully, you get a customer service sticker because we have those as well before. So get that as well. And there's some shirts and stuff we do before that. So hopefully, we can get that to you. I do have to say, I don't know if you looked at my star rating or not. Let, well, let, let's pull it up live on air. So give me one second. I can pull it up live as we're recording right now. So people listening online, I'm looking on our system called FMS. Mark begs. And I'm going to look up your star rating in real time. So you start with us on the 16th of the 4th, 2024. And your star rating is perfect. And you've got 10 ratings, 5 there. And it says you're too cheap with our price rating. It says you've got price rating as low, which means we have a thing called the price on a server that customers can tick. And your average is low. So it means your pricing is too low. So you might want to raise your, your pricing according to these surveys as well. So you got a perfect five star expensive? rating. Some of the other blokes, Randy, so I don't want to raise it up too much. Yeah, well, it's got here. It's got perfect five star ratings. So I mean, perfect. Um, low. It's got low price rating, and you've got a perfect five star rating as well. So everyone says you've got an excellent service. Mark's worth it. Work ethic, great, great work, work ethic, enthusiasm, all that sort of stuff. So that's really, really good to hear as well. And I presume you're getting a lot of referrals because um, yeah, 
you don't, you don't have many survey responses, which means a lot of that stuff that might have come via the gym system. So I presume you're getting a lot of walk ups and referrals and stuff. What about yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. I've just started asking people to do the survey. Good. Yeah. Yeah. It's look. It's not. It's the gym survey is not like it's just more of a quality control method internally for us. You know, if that can leave you a review online or you know share your host in groups and stuff, probably where you're going to get more benefit out of it. Yeah. The gym survey is more just a customer control quality control thing for us with franchisees but yeah you got a perfect five star rating so well done top world well on that makes me happy no <laughs> you do you're doing well mate so thank you very much for joining us today mark it's great to be able to tune in with someone you know from four months ago who's listened to the content and coming to actually hear marries up as well to the experience is probably the main thing for us so thank you for jumping on tonight as well we appreciate it no worries you're a legend mate thanks uh, thanks thank you for listening to the episode of the more than just mowing podcast by james mowing if you do need help with your local gardening expert please give us a call at 131 546 for Australia, 0800 454 654 for New Zealand or head to jimsmowing.com.au or jimsmowing.co.nz. If you liked what you heard, please make sure you leave us a review as well. Wherever you consume your podcast, we appreciate your support. And until next episode, we hope you have a great week.